So the newest patch for Mortal Kombat 1 on the Nintendo Switch has finally released. We're now on patch 1.12 and this is the update that brings us Peacemaker as a DLC character and we also can now see Janet Cage's character in the cameo select screen. She will however not be playable until a later date. But one thing with this update that's a bit different from the last few patches at least specifically for the Nintendo Switch, is that NetherRealm actually included a patch list this time. And it's a bit of a doozy too. We have a bunch of balance changes to the playable roster and cameos, but it also looks like the Switch version specifically received a lot of attention this patch. We're gonna get into that, but before we begin, the like button is feeling kinda lonely right now, so be a deer and hit that real quick. Also, if you play MK1 on the Switch, don't forget to check the description for a link to my Discord where you can set up matches with other Nintendo Switch players. And so with all that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this patch. In the general fixes part of the patch notes, we can see that they made some changes to the AI. And like I said earlier, they added Peacemaker to the roster. Janet Cage can also now be seen in the cameo select menu. Also, dude, we got another tiny situation here. They have to fix Janet Cage's face and her body. She does not look appealing at all, which is strange considering that she's supposed to be an actress, right? Anyway, so they added the ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 skins for Scorpion, Reptile, and Smoke to the premium shop and the Mortal Kombat 3 skin for Sub-Zero. Some visual issues with brutalities were fixed, although they don't mention specifically which. Maybe it's a fix all across the board, but I can say for sure that the Luke Kang's brutalities have all been fixed as you can see here. The ragdolling is a lot better and the position of the defeated character is how it's supposed to be. All of Liu Kang's brutalities perform better. Let me know down below if your character's brutalities play better now. Okay, so the next one is a big one for a lot of people, but the Sub-Zero Deadly Alliance skin had a bug with the eye color, and so that was fixed in this patch. Some visual effects were missing and were added back in, but they don't specify which. Although I can say that things do look a lot more dynamic now. The next one was a big problem even in the last patch and like I mentioned in a previous video, King of the Hill on the Nintendo Switch used to disconnect all the time and that has finally been fixed. We also now have confirmation that there's not going to be any cross progression for the Nintendo Switch version, which honestly does not make any sense considering that they're pretty much the same game. Maybe it has something to do with the crossplay aspect of it and that's why they didn't include it, but who's to say? But hey, you know, even The Witcher 3 had cross-progression with the Switch version and the other platforms, so who knows. Maybe cross-progression will come to the Switch at a later date, but let's not get our hopes up for that. For training mode, they added the ability to practice with character-specific abilities, like, like here for example, with Peacemaker, you can practice with his force field active, and if you have Chameleon as a cameo, you can set it to start with a specific variation of her cameo, like Melina, Kitana, or Jade, but they will still change randomly. However, you can just reset to go back to the variation you want. A new issue that seems to have cropped up in this new patch is the timing between when the announcer says round one and when he says fight. When he says fight, it seems to be a lot more delayed than it was before. For invasions mode, you now get more XP after each encounter and you no longer have to deal with diminishing returns if your opponent is at a lower level. Personally, I don't care too much about this. I'm more appalled by how they re-added stage hazards. Like, dude, I'm not trying to play this shit. It's already not fun and now you want to make my time even harder? Anyway. I still believe the best fix for invasions mode is complete removal. They still haven't added a stage map. Peacemaker gets a cool new, unique animation for the Test Your Might minigame. The final cutscene for the towers mode seems to slowly be improving. For this patch it definitely performs better than the last time I saw it, but it is still visibly slow. Now let's take a look to see if there were any improvements in the match loading. As we all know, this was a big problem for MK1 on the Switch. When it launched, it took 40 seconds to load a casual match. A couple patches later, it got worse at 60 seconds. But with the Quan Chi update, they actually fixed that issue to where it only took 20 seconds to load a casual match. 
Now, I know that still sounds bad if you're coming from PS5 or Steam, but you gotta remember this is the Switch, and it means it loaded matches faster than MK11 for the Switch, which people thought would never happen. So it looks like there wasn't that big of a change, but with the match from 1.12, it loaded 2 seconds faster than the one from 1.11. Now let's take a look at how fast rematches load. In the last patch, they actually took quite a while. Rematches took longer to load than the first match, which is strange if you ask me. And it looks like that's still the case in the new patch, but rematches are still faster than they were before. But they still take longer to load than the first match. I wonder what's causing that, you know? You would think that it would load a lot faster than the first match, but in any case, in the last patch, rematches took about 28 seconds to load, while in the new patch, it's about 26 seconds. So now let's take a look at the Switch version of Peacemaker, starting with some of his intros in the Switch version. Glam metal is the best music ever. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Whatever you say, old timer. <laughs> Suck on that! You look at me strangely. Cause I clocked that epic six pack you're rocking. Jesus! What the hell? So did Liu Kang create my universe? Its origin remains a mystery. <laughs> Your heart's in the right place, but you can stick that lecture where the sun don't shine. Jesus! What the hell? On my world, Aquaman's a total poser. No way, so is mine. Jesus! What the hell? Suck on that! You can't take me, Pipsqueak. Pipsqueak. Pip, squeak. <laughs> Suck on that. Now let's take a look at his finishers. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Little shit. As you can see, it looks as though Peacemaker has some issues similar to what Johnny Cage had at first, at least with his finishers, where he doesn't make any expressions with his face, nor do his lips move when he talks, which is kind of weird. Hopefully it gets fixed in a future update. So for this part of the video, we're going to go into the balance changes and fixes to the main characters and cameo characters as well. I won't be reading every single one, but all the balance changes will be on screen. For Ashra, her down back punch now deals more damage and causes a knockdown if it hits the opponent's cameo. For Baraka, I guess his chop chop attack used the same input regardless of which control settings you had set, so that was fixed. With Aguirre's he had a problem where if he landed inevitable on his opponent and his opponent's cameo, the teleport would not activate. That was fixed. For Havoc, Scab Stab no longer allows the opponent to perform a cameo ambush while it's in hit reaction. And Neoplasm had a sound glitch that was fixed. They also fixed a lingering visual with enhanced bloodbath if his fatal blow is used before corpse taunt. It doesn't look like Johnny Cage got nerfed at all, which is mind blowing, but he did have an invulnerability to high attacks during some of the recovery frames of a ball buster while in the hype state, so that was fixed. For Kenshi, they changed the color of his cameo meter to blue whenever Sento is on screen. Kenshi will also now take 20 damage whenever Sento is hit. So that's actually pretty cool because fuck Sento, you know? Whenever Kenshi goes for a throw while Sento is active, Sento will be vulnerable to attack. And they also fixed the visual bug that occurred sometimes when Sento is hit. For Lee Mei's enhanced Nova Blast, the follow-up attacks were sometimes blockable if done at full screen against certain characters, but that's not possible anymore. Lee Mei had a whole bunch of bugs fixed. There wasn't really anything for Sub-Zero, Tanya got buffed for some reason, and as we can see here, Quan Chi got the most changes out of every other character in the game. 
so Quan Chi players are gonna be eating pretty good in this patch. Quan Chi even got a new move where he creates a portal near the opponent and if the opponent stands in it, his meter will drain and Quan Chi will gain armor. Alright, I do think that this patch was a big improvement for the Switch version. Personally though, I think aside from just new characters, the game needs adjustments to the cameos so that they're not so overpowered. For example, Kung Lao and Striker are the worst defenders and they were not touched at all. All in all, the Switch version is currently in the best state that it's ever been. It doesn't look like this patch has broke the game <laughs> like the Quan Chi update did, so I guess that's cause for celebration. Peacemaker looks like he's gonna be pretty fun to use, so so now with all that out of the way, I'm gonna hit the lab with Peacemaker and hopefully I'll have an online gameplay video up with him tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna keep bringing you more combo videos, online matches, and video game news. I'm Switch Played. Done.